right? So face-to-face -face is the most common one. This is the one where both parties sit at the same table. You sit on your side with your client. I'm sitting on that side with your client. And it's typically held at a title company. Could be in an attorney's office. It could actually be anywhere that you want to close it as long as both parties agree. We've closed at uh, libraries before. I've closed in our office before. You could close at um, any place you guys both agree. I've seen closings happen at, uh, um, what's that Mexican restaurant? Um, Chipotle. Went into lunch one day in Chipotle and there was a closing going on. Now, I knew what it was because I recognized the setup um, and was heard some of the overheard some of the conversation. So I know it actually was a closing going on. And that is attended by the buyer and the seller and their respective real estate agent. There could be attorneys. I had closed a I was joking with someone the other day. I closed a commercial deal several years ago where there were nine people in the closing room and I was the only one that was not an attorney. The buyer was an attorney, but he had an attorney with him. The seller was an attorney and he had his attorney. The closing person that worked for the title company, because this was a high end commercial, it was like 27 million. He was an attorney that closed it. The lender showed up before they were going to wire $27 million in who had their attorney. So there was like, I was like the only one that was not an attorney in that deal. So they could be everywhere. And that usually slows the process down because they argued over pro the word proration for like 20 minutes. But there could be attorneys there. There could be other people like the mortgage broker I mentioned. There could be a person representing the title company. So there could be many different people in this closing. And typically, the principals in the closing, i.e. the actual buyer and the seller, sit closer to the head of the table because that's where all the action is and everybody else sits further away, okay? The person that actually runs it will be called the closing agent or sometimes a closing officer or just the closer or in some cases, it's just Mary. Hey, Mary, glad to see you. They are the one that will be guiding this exchange or guiding this passing of papers. That's why it's sometimes called that. This closing officer is always a notary public. They have the power to notarize documents. That's why if you bought or sold a house recently, you know that when you go in, typically the first thing the closer says is, hey man, do you have your ID? Do you have your ID? And they will collect the ID of all the principals involved, the sellers and the buyers. If there's multiple like husband and wife and they're signing the deed, they will definitely have their ID checked so that this person, as they're signing, they will notarize and put their notary stamp and remember, they are notarizing to show what? Two things. Is it you? And are you signing on your own volition? So the title company closing officer or the closer is almost always a notary as well. They will make sure that everything is done in a specific order. As I mentioned, the principal sit closer to the head of the table. The closer usually sits on the end of the table like this because they will be serving both parties. They will be helping both parties. Hey, here's the document. Please sign this. Then they notarize. Hey, buyer, here's the loan documents. Please sign this. And then they notarize them. So they will sit at the head of the table and the principal sit closer to them and everybody else falls in line down the end of the table. And like I said, a lot of times you just sit at the end of the table and you're watching Facebook through the, on your phone the whole time and go, oh, we're done? Okay. That's what you would happen. The second way that we can close this is called closing in escrow. 
Now, you've heard this word before when we talked about taxes are being escrowed or insurance premiums are being escrowed by the lender. Remember, escrow just means it's being held for someone else in a secure spot. So you could close in escrow as well, meaning that both sides of the deal, the buyer or the seller, cannot be at the same location at the same time. This will happen. You know, typically a common way is, hey, I can't make the four o'clock closing because I'm a surgeon and I've got to do a surgery. So they may go in early in the morning and sign their half of the documents. So when they sit at the table on their side, there's literally no one on the other side. And they sign all their documents. And then this third party escrow agent, which is typically the title company, will take those documents and place them in a safe inside of their location. And then at four o'clock, the other side comes in. And when they sit at the table, there's no one on the other side because they've already been there. And the title closing agent will go and get the documents and bring them out and set them down and go, okay, here's the documents that have already been signed. Now you need to sign your portion and they will close them in escrow. And then once they're signed, they will call that agent from the people that were in the early and go, hey man, we're now closed, come and get your documents. And the buyer will come in later or tomorrow, or you come in and pick up all of the documents that we needed or that your client needed if you're helping them out. So that would be closing in escrow where they're not face to face. Okay. <clears throat> escrow company could be anybody just it's, it's whoever the closer is in your state. Like in South Carolina, they use uh, attorneys. In Indiana, we use title companies. And basically, this is what I was saying here. The agent will, the closing agent or the closing officer will collect all of these documents and hold them in escrow until the other client comes in. Now, in some cases, they may be not in the same geographical region like a buyer buying a property that may be a bank owned home by a bank out of Texas. So what happens in a case like that is the title company will get all the documents together. They will then overnight those documents to the bank and the bank will sit with their closing officer and sign the paperwork and their closing officer will notarize them. They will then put all those documents into an overnight envelope send them back to the closing agent so that when the buyer comes in at the scheduled time of four o'clock the next day, buyer comes in, sits down, the title agent or the closing officer will grab that FedEx envelope and they will open it in front of you. Zip, pull out all the documents, have you sign them and give you your copy and send a copy back to the bank overnight the next day. So it could be done because you can't be at the same time. It could be done because you're not in the same location. Now, I will tell you, those are the most two common ways. In the technology that we have created and due to COVID, there have been issues or advancements, if you will, on how stuff close. <clears throat> I had one close, and I'm going to call it the A&W root beer stand method. You guys remember A&W root beer? You guys may be a little young, but A&W, uh, what's another one? I think Sonic may do this, where you pull up in your car, and you order in your car, and they bring the food to you, and you sit in the and they put it on the tray in the window and you sit in your car and eat. Remember that? We had a couple closings during the 2020 time frame where title companies literally told us, all right, buyers pull up, 
in the parking lot and sellers pull up in the car beside them. And then I pulled up in another car over here beside my buyer. And you know, you're looking over at your buyer and you're going, call me. <laughs> so what happened was the title company actually guy ran out to the car, handed the documents through the window to the buyer who then he ran back in and called the buyer and called me on a group call and explained all the documents and the buyer sat in their car and signed everything. Then the guy came out, grabbed that stack of documents, ran over to the seller's car, handed it through the window, went back in and called them and their agent and signed all the seller side of the documents and then came and got the completed package, ran back in, made copies of everything, and came back out and gave everybody. He went down the line, my car, their car, the seller's car, the seller's agent's car, and handed out the documents. So it was kind of like face-to-face, -face, but we actually sat in separate vehicles, you know, just waving to each other and call me and doing stuff like that. So it was pretty different. You may run into a situation where buyers and sellers have created a hostile environment with each other, and you may opt to be sitting in separate rooms. I've seen this happen. You may both show up at four o'clock, but one sits in room A by themselves with you, and one sits in room B, and the title officer actually runs across from room to room back and forth. Uh, they did that near the end of COVID where they let them in the building, but to reduce exposure, they put them in different rooms. So there's that. I've had situations where my clients couldn't be in the same room with each other because of a court order. There was a restraining order against one of the, uh, sellers. So I actually went in and closed with one of my sellers. And then two hours later, the other seller came in and signed. And we had to almost sign in escrow just for the sellers because they weren't allowed to be in the same room to, with each other. Um, as you guess, it was a divorce case. All right. <clears throat> so that is the closing in escrow. That is kind of the second way that they will do all of this. And here's all the stuff that happened. Now, should one of the office, one of the science sites not close, meaning they couldn't make it, something happened, then all of those documents get returned back to the original person. All right. So we have had that happen where a one side of the deal was on the way and was in a car accident and couldn't actually attend. So all of the documents went back to the original party and anything that was signed obviously was negated and not recorded. And of course, it is not truly transferred because remember, even if the seller signs the deed, what's the requirement for transfer? Remember, I've said it, and it's two parts. It must be delivered and accepted. So even if the seller signs the deed and the buyer never shows up to accept it, property's not transferred. So even in the escrow, the seller can sign the deed, but it's still his house until, say, 4 o'clock when the buyer comes in and, and gets his paperwork and the title company goes, okay, congratulations, here's your paperwork. And the buyer reaches up and takes that document, even though it was signed at 9 a.m., it wasn't delivered until 4. That's when the property transfers. Same thing with a bank. Even though the bank signed it yesterday in Texas, Possession or ownership has not transferred because now the buyer comes in at four o'clock, does all their signature, and the closing officer says, congratulations, here's your documents, and the buyer reaches up at that time and accepts the deed, then it transfers, 
All right. So don't worry about things that are being held in escrow ever being executed unlegally, illegally, because the escrow company will hold that. Okay. So let's talk about some of the special legislation that affects the closing. 